Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks with Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is brothers from different roots and it is an easy level problem. So the problem says that we have been given two binary search trees and our task is to compute the function count pairs and what are these pairs? Essentially, there, there are pairs in which there are two elements A and B where A is from the first binary search tree and B is from the second binary search tree and their sum should be equals to x, right? So this is the this is the condition that the pair a comma b should satisfy, and we have to count all the number of such pairs. Now, uh, if this is a tree problem, and uh, we anyways have to traverse through the tree, right? Through both of the trees, so it is going to take o of n space for the recursion stack. Now, if I am already using o of n space, then I can also use some kind of a data structure to store all the nodes that I have in one of the trees. I can use any one of the trees, right? So let's say I have the first tree as 5 and then 3 and then 7 and then 2, 4, 6 and 8, right? So I'm saying that I'm, I'll, I'll be essentially using O of n space for the recursion or the DFS or the traversal through this tree. Now, I can also use O of n space only to store all the elements that are present in this particular tree, right? So, what is the advantage of it? Now, let's say I, I have this one element 5 here and I store it into my some data structure like a map, right? So, I have a y, I have a 5 and I have a frequency 1, right? Now, let's say I wanted the output to be 15. Let's say the output is 15. In the second map, my first element is 10, right? So, if this current element is 10, what is the other value that I need to make it equal to 15? That means if a plus b is equal to 15, I know the value of b is 10. I can find the value of a that is 15 minus 10, 15 minus 10 and that is equals to 5, right? Now, once I know that for this particular node, I need a corresponding 5 and how many nodes are present in the original tree that is this one, I already know with the help of the map that I use to store all the values. So I can just count the frequencies of 5 in this particular map and that will be the number of pairs this particular 10 will form with the other tree, right? So this is exactly how you could solve this problem. So in this particular case, you will have the frequency of all these elements equals to 1. And now let's say you still want 15 and uh, let's say we have 6 here. So 15 minus 6 is going to be 9. So I'm going to look whether there is a 9 in this particular tree or not. And I'm not going to look it through a traversal. Instead, I'm just going to look through my map, right? So whatever frequency is present in my map, I'm going to add that value to my answer, right? So this is exactly what I've done in this particular problem. I've created an unordered map of like called F. So this is F is basically frequency. I've initialized my answer with zero. So I call my first DFS function and if the node is null pointer, I'm just going to return. Otherwise, I'm going to increment the frequency of the current node and call the DFS function on the left and the right child as well. Similarly, I call the DFS2 function with the root 2, that means the next tree. And again, if the node is null pointer, I'm just going to return. And this time, instead of adding the frequency, I'm just going to check whether x minus node data is present or not. If it is present, I'm going to add that particular value to my answer, right? And then again, call the DFS function on the left and the right. At the end, I can just return my answer and this would be the correct solution of this particular problem. Now again, there might be other methods as well, but since we are anyways using O of n space, then we can also use it to store all the elements in the first tree or in any one of the trees, right? So save the elements of any one of the trees and add the answer in the other tree, right? So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works and this code is correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.